cannot afford to miss a single moment of the next hour. Get ready to have your ideas about sexuality, love, and relationships blown wide open. It's time to get educated, entertained, and enlightened, as well as sexually empowered. You have now tuned into the Tantra Love Sex and Intimacy Show. Now, here's your host, Tanya Diamond. And you know, if you call in, the first person you get to talk to is Gary with that amazing voice. And so that's worth calling in right there. Even if you just call in and say hi to Gary and hang up. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll, be a, it'll be a great moment in your life. I get that all the time. <laughs> he looks especially stunning today. I, I really Do like I? I like this outfit. Oh. Yeah, this is really nice. Good. Nice. That's the bad word. That's just a non passion I knew I was working with you tonight. Oh, thank you. Yes. You dressed for me. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it really it, it, it makes my show so much more fun when I have that beautiful eye candy and that voice to listen to. Right. That's right. We are here talking. Melody, is it Brooke or Brooks? Brooke. I, Brooke. Okay. Thank you, because I, I keep messing that up. So Melody Brooke, and her website is www.thisisgreatsex.com. And I think that you know, Melody's in uh, Dallas, and uh, yeah. I'm up here in Seattle. And we have, of course, some similarities. We both are working to help uh, eradicate uh, sexless marriage in the United States. And uh, helping people just really, uh, you know, get over some of this ignorance and get over some of this fear and pain that's happening. There can't be too many of us in the world. That's what I want to say, right? (laughs) No, and, you know, from my perspective, the more happy marriages we have, the happier adults we will have in the world. The happier the world will be. I know. Because if, if, if the marriages are happy... If, if couples are having sex with each other, they're probably not going to be beating their kids. They're probably not going to be having sex with their kids. They're probably, yeah. you know, or maybe something and, to that. Yeah, and we're going to end up with, uh, you know, perhaps a whole generation one day of, of adults that are uh, relatively stable and happy. You know, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine that? I mean, happy, less sick, day, less sick days, more passion, yes. more enthusiasm for the world and each other. Sex is not a luxury. Sex no, is actually a big absolutely. part of our being. And, and you know what amazes me is when I'll read these things about women saying, well, you know, he says he, he, you know, he needs sex. Sex is not a need. It's a want. I'm like, no. <laughs> mm. Absolutely wrong. Sex is absolutely it's one of our primary needs along with eating and sleeping. Right. I think what, what I hear when I hear women say that is what's happened is men are, men unfortunately are equating sex with the tranquilizer of getting off. And so right. when women say that, really what, what, they're, what they don't like to be used just for him to get off in. And that is part of the problem. Women are looking to have something more. They're looking for that intimacy, which is not just giving her flowers before you have sex. That's not really what intimacy is. And so I think that's part of the really big confusion, that women feel used a lot of the time. This is not, now when I say this, I know it sounds harsh. It's not because men are using women. It's because women are just feeling that way. Because most people are just having level one sex. I think there's right. four what levels to survival sex. sex. Right. I call it survival sex. Right, exactly. And yeah. since most people are having that type of sex, really we all get that basically, yes, it's much better for a man to be inside his woman than his hand as a rule. Though I know a lot of men that prefer their hand. Um, there's less work involved with that. That that, that still feels like they're, they're not giving, they're getting. They're trying to get something. And that's what Tantra, that's what things like Melody teaches, that's what some of these more, um, you know, you think you've got sex down. You're sitting there thinking, I don't need anybody to teach me about sex. I got it figured out. The problem is, you probably don't. Maybe well, just pro- a little one. The problem is, is if, you, if, you go, if you go online and you look for information about sex, so much of it is about technique. Yes. And yeah, the technique's fine. But the technique is not going to get you anywhere if your partner doesn't want you. Yeah, well, there is that, right? Here, I've got some great technique. Don't use it on me. Yeah, exactly. I don't care. Yeah. So what? Well, that's because, we've once again, we're being geared towards everybody thinks that set, sat, sexual satisfaction lies in orgasm. That's male-driven. Sexual satisfaction for most men lies in ejaculation when they don't know anything else. And not really orgasm, because most of them aren't really having orgasm. They're just having ejaculation. Right. You, there's a separa- separation. And for most women... They can have orgasm. Like I have one, one, one woman in particular at one of my classes said to me, Tanya, can you teach me how not to have an orgasm? And, and, of course, all the women are looking at her like, what? And I said, what's going on? And she said, my husband makes me count them out loud. 
And I said, what? We're all, we're all just flabbergasted. And she said, well, I'm really, really easy or, easily orgasmic, and so I tend to have a lot of orgasm. It doesn't really matter what he's doing. I just tend to be that way. And it's really tiring because he wants me to count them out loud. Like, it's all about, you know, woo score time. Right. So for him, it's like a trophy. It's another notch on his belt. Right. And so he feels all cool because she's counting out loud. And I said, well, get a clicker. I was just, I mean, I was joking. That's obviously not the problem. <clears throat> and, I, and, and I asked her if she explained to him, you know, that she, that that didn't make her feel good. And she said to him, look, you know, I really, I'd prefer not to have orgasms. He was flabbergasted. You know, he said, but that's, that's it. I mean, you're having an orgasm. That's, that's, that's the pinnacle. And she's like, no, it's not. I'd rather have you present with me than counting my orgasms. <laughs> right. You know? And so there we are. Uh, and then uh, added to the confusion that everybody believes the orgasm is it. If you're not orgasmic, the orgasm right. is and it. That's, of course, that's part of the whole faking the orgasm thing. It's like these women think that if, they, if they're not, if they don't fake an orgasm, then their husband's going to think they're dissatisfied. Right. Well, and, and, and or no, even even bigger than that, a lot of women think that there's something wrong with them. Right. So as and a woman, if, wrong with them. right, when if it, I don't have an orgasm, fact, yep. When in fact women can, I mean, all of the research even talks about this. Women can be fully satisfied with a, a sexual rela- act that does not culminate in, a, in an orgasm. Oh, yeah. I've, that, I've, I've had quite a few that were just really heart tender, loving, sweet, wonderful. Sessions. Yeah. Yes. Passionate, wonderful love making sessions. It didn't, and I, and and it, that that was irrelevant. Yeah, I agree. And, and and it can happen just the same way for men. And and when we recognize and put all that pressure that it has to be about the orgasm, that's when faking starts to happen. Right. Well, we we that's lose it. Women aren't. Starts. Yeah, women aren't sure. I mean, I've had situations where <clears throat> I realized that the man was going to keep going until I actually had an orgasm. This was when I was a lot younger. And I wasn't going to even get there because most women don't have orgasm through intercourse. And, um, yeah, I mean, it was really, for most, especially younger women, it's much easier just to fake it than say something, you know, because then it's over. <laughs> but, you know, not better. Easier, perhaps, than No, not it's never better. Well, I mean, that, then what are you left with? I left, I mean, I didn't have a relationship with that person. Right, There's somebody you're going to want to continue with. No. Yeah. No, and so, unfortunately, now, if you're in a relationship where you have been doing this for many, many years... I understand that this is really tough. Okay, I understand that it's really, really difficult to decide to come clean, so to speak, with your partner. And, yeah, it can be really devastating. Yeah, and uh, we have tools uh, in which to be able to help you do that, you know, ways to communicate uh, and, and kind of start over. And Because, you know, really, when I talk to men, they really, they do get it, you know. I mean, they may be just faking that they don't get it, but they really get it, and yeah. and it's not it's not happy for any one of them. I mean, most men, once again, want to please their women. Yeah, I, I was watching um, Oprah uh, with the Dr. Berman mm-hmm. um, a few months ago, and there was a couple that she had on there, and the the, the guy was they, they they weren't having sex, and the guy the guy was saying, you know, well, what his fantasy was, his his real fantasy is just to be able to see her being pleased, even if it was with another man. She yeah. just, he just wanted to be able to see her being pleased. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's <clears throat> it's amazing. I do have couples come in that say that. The man will say, well, if it takes somebody else, then, you know, I'd rather I'd rather that were the case. And frequently right. it's not really about somebody else. It's really about getting past the uh, ignorance that's so pervasive and getting and, to the heart of the matter. And ironically, of course... What it is that the woman wants is, and this is recently, there was a, a recent article about this, about what women really want. What women really want is to know that their man absolutely, totally desires, out of control desires them. Right. Women want to be adored. Men want to be trusted. Yes. And if uh, your man is adoring you and you diss him and tell him, ah, no, that's not true, you're not trusting him. Yeah. <laughs> then he's going to stop adoring you. Oh, oh, you know, it's kind of the roundabout circle. It's it's yeah. the circle. There's a lot. There are a lot of ways to learn um, how to do all of these things. And I, I wanted to take a step back into that technique thing, because if, <clears throat> for for instance, such as myself, who who has done a lot of research, who knows a lot of techniques, um, I hearkened back to a lover that had done a lot of research on techniques, 
And I remember there laying in bed with him, and all of a sudden it, he was he was so not present. He was completely in his head thinking about the techniques he was doing. That I was actually able to lay there and go, oh, well, that's the butterfly technique. He's going to do three strokes that way, four strokes this way. Oh, good day. He's going to go down there. And so I just, it was really fascinating. But, and then, then I found, oh, then now he just switched to, uh, you know, that tape. And, oh, look, he's going to do that. Oh, I don't like that part coming up. Um, and <clears throat> I know, I mean, it's funny and very sad. Because it is. You, you know, it's funny you say that because it reminds me of when, um, after I got my degree in, in counseling and I started into counseling myself and I, it took me the longest time because I'd go, okay, they're doing gestalt now. Okay. They're doing marrying right. now. I mean, I was like, yes. <laughs> naming all the techniques that they were doing. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not jaded. I won't give anybody that impression, but what happens is if somebody's not present, present meaning that you're not in your head, you're actually right. enjoying the experience you're having. In your body, in yeah. the experience. <laughs> I'd rather be with somebody that didn't have any fancy technique but was totally absorbed and totally thrilled about what they were to, doing. Totally, totally able to be in their body and be with you. Right. And, and I would say that most women feel that way. I would, I would you know, women that I talk to. You know, if you, you know I, I go to teach a class and I'm talking even about compliments, you know, how to compliment a woman, and I show up and sit in front of her and just give her a compliment – they're all like, can I sleep with you? I mean, these are heterosexual right. women that all of a sudden are right. like, I want to sleep with you. And it's because I get what they want. So men, listen up. And women, if you've got a man, you want to play some of this for him. You can just download this onto his iPod or something. <laughs> just <laughs> let him hear it. Because most men are afraid. They're afraid to find out they're doing something else wrong. And right. we need to champion them. We because need they're to, so emotionally fragile. Yeah, we need to give them. They don't like to hear that. But it's true. We need to give them places to be incredibly successful. I don't think it's our obligation to catch our partners being wrong. I think it's our responsibility to catch them doing things right. Absolutely. How do we make our relationships more successful? That are... means communicating those things that are turning us on. Right. And not with words necessarily, although certainly words could be there, but... You know, like, I'll never forget one of the sexiest moments with my, with my current husband was when shortly after we got married, I walked into the kitchen, and he was standing over the kitchen sink with his sleeves rolled up. Oh, yeah, that was nice. Dishes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I just walked up behind him and hugged him and said, oh, man, this is a sexy side. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I concur. We, I, the, this guy on a profile recently had himself in a pair of really hot um nice boxers with a pair of socks and he was uh, posed, but he was pushing a vacuum cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, baby. Now, you know, now you're talking about what women want. Busy right. women actually need some help that way. It's, it's quite alluring. Uh, porn for women, the man doing the dishes, vacuuming the house. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he didn't put his shirt buttoned down a little bit and that's, washing the dishes. That's you know? right. <laughs> Do not believe that women are not visual. I don't know who said that. I, I, it's completely wrong. Yeah, they they often say men are visual, women are not, which I that's, disagree with yeah, completely. Whatever, that's just insane. Hey, yeah. I it's, talking about attention to detail. I notice Gary here. Gary has this this really awesome Jeep outside, and and Gary's Jeep is completely immaculate all the time. I mean, you know, you could I could you know put my lipstick on in the side of the vehicle there because it's got a shine on it. And what I was thinking that was interesting when I saw that, the thought struck me that you know how so many how there's so many men that say something like. I don't, I don't notice details, you know, like right. the wife gets their haircut or gets a new dress or something like that. And they'll say something like, well, I, I don't, I just, uh, you know, who knew? And yet those are the same men that have cars, but if there's like, you know, one little spot somewhere on their car, they notice it. Right. So then I wonder, hmm, are you paying as much attention to your woman as you are your car, you know, or your computer or your, whatever it is, your special, you know, gadget du jour is. Right. What would happen if you paid that much attention to the details of your relationship or your woman? That you the same way in that. That would I think that would change some stuff. Yes. Yeah. And what happens if women <clears throat> would love their men as much as they love their accessories? Right. Not the men's accessories, <laughs> the women's. <laughs> you know, for those yes. women that are totally into their shoes or their handbags. I mean, I know women that go out and they they spend an exorbitant amount of money on a handbag. You know, right. how it feels, what it looks like, what it goes right with, and yet don't notice they're men. You know, don't notice that their men look sad or don't notice that their men don't accessorize with them well. 
<laughs> what happens if we just start showing up for our partners in the same way that we show up for these other things in our life that we seem to have passion for? And being aware that, that men really, what, uh, what really men respond most to, of course, is touch. Yeah, exactly. And it, and, and it you know, touch all over their body. You know, when yeah. you're walking through the through the the living room, if he's sitting there and you were to just make a little detour and run your hand across the back of his shoulders and smile, smiling too. Man, just men love it when you smile at them. Yeah, you know what? It's funny you say that because um, <laughs> I don't know what, what we were watching or talking about recently, but Mike says, you know what men want? Men, men, men will go with the girl that smiles at them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it's telling, I mean, they're getting that everything's okay vibe. Right. If you're smiling, everything's okay. Yeah. And if you're not smiling, at least be moaning. <laughs> then everything's okay. <laughs> that I mean, it's it is that it is that way. And women, what do we want? We want men that look at us. We launched a um I launched my men's dating etiquette program last week. Had our first date Friday night with uh two volunteers. This was amazing cuz we all four of us actually had the best date we've had for a long time. <laughs> And the guys were saying it was partly it was because um, we were just so happy and easy to be with being a great date, you know, being in the moment of having a great date. And, you know, when you're with your partner, partner or single, show up for the experience. I mean, I, I, I say this and people just go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't think they're getting it. What what is it? How can I help people get that more? What that looks like? What that sounds like? What that feels like? to be more in the moment with your partner, to put everything else on the back burner. Breathe. Yeah, well, this all starts with the breath, right? It all starts with the breath. That's right. Yeah. Got to breathe. You and I both say that, and people say, well, I'm breathing all the time. No, they're not. They're going... <laughs> right. Well... <laughs> not breathing. <laughs> not quite like that. <laughs> but breathing will help in that area as well. Yeah. they got to breathe at full, deep body, full body breath. And, and and you have tools to help them with that because I do as well. Yes. Yeah. 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 I mean, breathing is really any anybody worth their weight anymore in in teaching change and teaching transformation and teaching sexuality. If they're not starting with teaching you about conscious breath, uh, then they're not teaching you anything. You cannot bypass this important component. Well, something that people don't realize, I think, about about that full deep breath is that it increases awareness. It gives you more information about yourself and the world when you breathe fully and deeply. Yeah. I know people say to me, I can't believe you just keep harping on the breath thing. But it, it's, you know, my spiritual practice. I mean, I do a lot of amazing things, and, and I get asked about my spiritual practice, and really it's just about being conscious and being breathing. Mm-hmm. I mean, the majority, I don't sit Zen for an hour. I, you know, I do Shintao, and I do breath work. And then I just bust out and live life. Um, I really endeavor to show people that in this day of technology, you know, we're, we're got our cell phones in our ears and we're driving everywhere, that you can still have a conscious spiritual practice. Be fully in the moment, fully conscious, fully aroused, on fire in, in today's world, in the technological world of today. And it's really about the breath, if you, yeah, if you go you back know- to that. Um, one of the issues, it's funny, this is kind of a sideline here, but for women, a lot of time that sort of um, sedate, positioned meditation that that is harped on through sort of the male-dominated religious way of, the spiritual way of teaching, mm-hmm. doesn't always work for women. Mm-hmm. Um, but in fact, other kinds of meditation are more powerful for women. And one of the ones that I found for myself is is a dance meditation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dance, yeah. And just to, to allow myself to breathe and move to, to music. And guess and what? I, Your man will enjoy that if you dance for him. Oh, yeah, totally, absolutely. And, it, and you will enjoy it because you'll be so much more in your body and so much more in the present. I was telling some of my couples, yeah, if the woman comes home first and she puts on her favorite dancing thing and just starts dancing and he comes into the house to find his woman dancing, it'll be a very interesting evening. Yes. <clears throat> a lot better than coming into her saying, why don't you take out the trash? Right. <laughs> <laughs> the trash. Why don't we yeah. dance the trash out ourselves? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, one of my... Uh, 
one of my favorite CDs for really bringing up energy and just having a great time. And of course, I had to buy it because of the title. It's called Drum Sex. And uh, it's a great CD drumming, just really lots of fun, lots of uh, great rhythm on it. And I use it at my workshops and um, drum sex. I'm sure you can buy it anywhere and uh, just get some music, see what it works, see what works for you. Right. And enjoy it and maybe, you know, get him to dance with you. Turn right. off the and, TVs. And that, and that is, you know, one of the things I think that, um, in fact, life, lifelong studies of couples that are happiest together, in the end, women, when asked it, how happy their marriages are, well, the thing is that, that over time, was the number one predictor of whether or not a woman would say that, that her marriage had been a happy one was one in which they had danced together. Hmm. Wow. That one well, that makes sense because it's a it's the feminine movement, right? Yes. And if but can... it also the other thing about dancing is that it it is a feminine movement, but at the same time, most of the time when you're dancing, especially if you're slow dancing, slow dancing is about the man being in charge. Oh yeah, we like men in charge. Yes. <laughs> the man is in charge. The woman follows. Yeah. And follows with in grace. And right. then in symmetry with their partner. Right. And that's, of course, the way sex it needs to be. Yeah. And that doesn't mean that the man always initiates sex. So, I mean, no, so and, and, you know, and, and my husband would laugh if you'd heard me saying this because, <laughs> because it doesn't always happen that way on the dance floor either. <laughs> yeah. You know? I know I mean, the majority that. of the time, it's about him leading, but that doesn't mean there aren't times when I do. Right. It's the da- well, and it's the dance. We're saying it's the, the dance, dance. dance. We've got a right. couple minutes left here, about two and a half minutes left. Go ahead and uh, give us your info, please, Melody. It's Melody Brook at MelodyBrook.com if you wanted to email me and ask me any questions. Or you can check us out at www.thisisgreatsex.com. And when you go to that site, what you'll get is an assessment, which will take you through a series of questions that um, is different for every person that takes them because it knows based on what questions you've asked, what question to ask next. Cool. And at the end, you get a re- an assessment that talks about where the problem areas are in your life, in your relationship, and, and your approach to your relationship so that you have a lot more information about what's working and what isn't when cool. you're done. And that, that's all 100% free. That's awesome. We're going to have to check that out. Do you have to be in a relationship? So mainly you work with relationships then. Um, yes, and no, you don't have to be in a relationship because it's also about your just your approach to relationships and how okay. you understand relationships. So you can be single married, living with somebody, separated, divorced, it doesn't matter. Excellent. You'll get lots of information. If you're breathing, go take it. I'm That's gonna, right. I'm going to go take it. And so, and otherwise you've got, uh, this is great sex.com. Yes. And then, and then ultimately what we have, once you, you know, once you do that, we'll take you to some information about our webinars, our seminars, which are online streaming seminars that you, that, that you'll have access to 18 lessons that can transform everything in your relationship. That sounds good, and we've got less than a minute left. I want to thank you very much for being on today, and we will well, talk soon. thank you. I've really enjoyed it as usual. I always enjoy talking with you. Thank you, and hey, you got to get to learningtantra.com, seeing all the amazing things we're doing. Follow me on Twitter. Hit me up on Facebook. Always adding to the amazing life that I'm living, and I am grateful for all of you because you are what helps my life be incredibly amazing. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. You have been listening to the Tantra Love, Sex, and Intimacy Show with your host, Tanya Diamond. Visit our website at www.tanyadiamond.com. That's T-A-N-J-A for more information on workshops and classes. Hey!